Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Fascinating Womanhood channel. On our channel, we talk about everything that has to do with developing femininity and building strong, long-lasting, loving relationships. I am Cherry Lynn, and I'm here with my mom, Dixie Amelin Forsyth. Hi. Hi. So today we are talking about how to respond to rude women. We have been asked about this for so long, and we get asked about it all the time. We actually did a poll on our social media and asked ladies, what are some categories and some circumstances and scenarios where you feel like women are just rude to you? <laughs> and we found out that the poll was really interesting. So that's kind of why we wanted to do today's video. But now we're going to talk about the three most common categories that we feel like women are being kind of insulted. We're going to talk about three reasons why we think it's happening. And we're also going to talk about three tips of how you can respond, because that's really right. what most people are asking asking us is how do you respond? Um, but before we jump into all that, what exactly are we talking about? Are we talking about, can you explain, is it just rudeness? Is it insults? Is it hatred? Is it all of the above? What do we mean by responding to rude women? Some people are rude because they're being uh, passively aggressive. But I think a lot of times women are rude because they are insensitive or don't realize what they said was rude. There's another thing you have to consider if you're just talking about the United States, which is where we live, it's a large country, there's different kind of cultures within American culture. And some people from different parts of the country say and do things that people in other parts think is extremely rude. They just don't do it there. People in other countries sometimes think that something we do is rude that we don't think anything of. So some of it is the, just the perception, but some of it is you have to be sensitive to it because sometimes you can kind of tell if someone's trying to get a dig in at you, they're either jealous of you or angry with you. And so they're sarcastic. It sounds like it's kind of all of the above because it depends on what your, <laughs> what your culture is, where your sensitivity levels lie. It's, it's rudeness, it's insults, it's kind of everything. Okay. So we're going to go into the three categories that we learn from our ladies that they are just being, they're hurt, their feelings are being hurt. And it's always usually by other women. The first one is appearance. How you've changed. Why, you're pretty. Probably the most common. What are well, some examples of that? I know I've been insulted for my appearance all my life. I don't know about you, but I have all my life. What, what are some examples of this? Oh, uh, I had some people say, are you sick? Is <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> something wrong? You look ill. You didn't get enough sleep. And I was fine. And I had got enough sleep. So there's <laughs> that. I've heard, no, I, I, my sister-in-law had a lot of women say to her, uh, when are you expecting? And she wasn't expecting because mm -hmm. she hadn't got rid of her baby uh, after baby bump. Yeah. So those have happened to me. People saying things like, why would you wear that? Yeah. I get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> or why are you so dressed up? I know that that's not yeah. really that rude. I guess it depends. You may be watching this, some of you, and think that's not that bad, but it just depends. Like you said earlier, it just depends on your sensitivity level and your self conscious, who, what you're self conscious about. And I, I mean, it really is hard for me when people comment on how I'm dressed because I put a lot of effort into how I'm dressed. And so if, so if another woman is like, why are you so fancy? Why are you so dressed up? It just immediately makes me feel like they think that I'm trying to like, compete with them or I'm trying too hard. And it's like, that's or, not or attention at seeking. Maybe <laughs> it's, maybe they think you're, it's attention seeking or yeah, yeah. I don't know. There's so many ways we can be rude to each other and things like, why do you wear makeup or so much makeup? Things like that. Um, I had someone comment to me that I looked nice. And then I had a backwards comment from another woman nearby that said, well, I would look nice if I was wearing all that makeup too. And, and I thought, I thought, you know, I don't think she meant to be mean. I don't think that was, I think it was supposed to be funny in her eyes, but to me, it was kind of rude and it kind of hurt my feelings. But that's another yeah. example is like, you might say something and you think it's funny, but it's actually kind of insulting. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> or, or do you dye your hair? I, I have been asked that so many times. Do you dye your hair? Like, yeah, I do. <laughs> I, well, I've had people ask me if I had breast implants, which is extremely rude. I mean, oh, I've never had anybody ask me that. I haven't. I haven't. But even if I had, it's too personal. You don't ask someone if they're on a period. I mean, you don't ask those kinds of things. Okay. This, that's appearance. I'm sure you all probably understand yeah, being, totally. being impacted by your appearance. Okay. And then the, the second one is your lifestyle choices. If I had more shallow feelings, I could perhaps conceal them as you do. This is one that the ladies really, when we did the poll, they were just so passionate about sharing their stories and, and how hurt they've been. So what are some examples of the lifestyle choices? Are you, if you're a stay at home mom, they might say, don't you work? Are you, are, if you're, if you're a stay at home mom, are you bored? What do you do all day? You just sit around and eat bonbons and watch soap operas. I got that one. 
you're going to have another baby. Don't you have enough already? Mm -hmm. I've had that. Having kids. I had people ask me that all the time. When are you having another kid? And I was trying to have Uh, another kid and I couldn't. And it was just that people don't realize sometimes that they're being rude. It doesn't sound rude to ask if you're having another kid, but you have to be careful because you just never know what's going on behind closed doors. I heard when, of course, my kids are grown. You're the youngest, but I heard people say when I was having my babies and I was expecting, you're having another baby. Don't you have enough already? Or don't you know what causes that? I got that one. Oh my goodness. That's so me. Yeah, I know. I know. And, and, oh, how about this one? Uh, didn't you finish school? Why not? Yeah. Just any kind of, um, big decision. I think like, um, do you homeschool your kids? Your kids go to public school. Oh, you homeschool. Like I even got that as a kid. Cause I was homeschooled. You're homeschooled. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was, a, I was hurt that other kids judged me and other girls that were my age or two. I mean, this, let's just be honest. This mm-hmm. starts at a very young age for women. I think even my kindergartner has girls that are mean to her on the playground. It starts at a very young age. Us ladies, we can be really mean verbally. And I don't think we always mean to. Yeah. It's, it, it can be really tough. And, and women generally, are more sensitive you might say something like that to a man they might just who cares right not take it so personally but we take things more personally because of our sensitivity so it's a two-edged sword okay and then the third one is everyday choices patty isn't it rather late for you now this is kind of similar to your lifestyle but it's a little bit more nitpicky than the lifestyle because the lifestyle choices are a little bit more uh, bigger picture. Whereas this is more about you're you're allowing your kids to eat that much sugar, or you 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 let your kids eat uh, processed foods. I've heard that one so many times. Oh, you let your kids have candy um, every day or something, things yeah. like that. How about this one? I got this one um, at a restaurant. Somebody said to me when I ordered, they said you're ordering that. Why would you order that? <laughs> there, there's things like uh, you eat meat or you don't eat meat. That's another one. Why don't you eat meat? Use those insipid words again and I shall leave the room this instant. Either one of them can be really rude. I've been kind of shamed for my healthy choices. Like, oh, you are so good. You eat a salad. Like, I wouldn't order that. I, I, I'm i going to go for the... Well, okay. Like, <laughs> I just think... I think you're... They're try- Sometimes people, women are trying to compliment you by saying it like that. But it actually comes across as you're judging my choices. And maybe... Well, just- uh, I... Uh, like you, I breastfed my babies longer than most women. Oh. I got, are you still breastfeeding? Oh, that one's that's a big one. Yeah. That's or- really personal too. It's really nobody's business, but people say things like that. Yeah. Or do you feed your baby formula? Anything, anything like that? That is, it, it's personal. It's it's judgmental, even though they don't necessarily mean for it to be. Um, another one is uh, manners. I have. I've had uh, women correct me on my kid. And this isn't just women, but it's mostly women. Correct me on my kid's manners. Like you say, hello, you say goodbye. And, oh, 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 yeah. and, um, and I know that, that, that they're trying to help, but if as, a, as a, just a, an acquaintance, someone trying to teach my kids manners or teach them things that I'm maybe still trying to work on with them, or maybe I haven't noticed when you try to kind of step in, that's rude too. Uh, see, I grew up in uh, California and at least the culture there when I was growing up. My mother and father did not teach us to respond to adults by saying yes, sir, or yes, Mm ma'am. It was not, it was, that was what you did with royalty in Mm -hmm. in Europe. And we were just taught to say yes or no. Mm -hmm. We didn't, we weren't taught to say ma'am, but some people are taught that that's just polite. You do that. So if you say, if they correct your child, you say yes, ma'am, or yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Some of that is cultural. It isn't just known and obvious to everyone. No, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up because the cultural differences can really come into play and it will help you if you can identify that with the other person too. If you realize like, oh, you know, they're probably just doing that. It's not really meant to be rude. It's just kind of part of how they grew up and they they aren't meaning to be hurtful. No, or disrespectful. Right. Okay. So why? Why? <laughs> why is this happening? We kind of touched on it a little bit because it just naturally came up, but what are the three main reasons? We we sat down and we talked about this. We had a really deep conversation about why, because of course we've probably been guilty of this ourselves. We've been rude to other women and not meant to um, in our lives. We've all probably done it at one point or another. So why? What is the root cause? Probably self-esteem. Or just not having been taught. I mean, manners are actually one of the things we do when we raise our children. We don't just feed them and clothe them. We teach them manners. We teach them principles and character and things like that. But sometimes it's poor self-esteem. Someone may have grown up 
without any of this training at all and might feel constantly like beneath people. And so they, they just really, they just really don't know, or they're insensitive. I think it, a lot of it's coming from insecurities. Somebody that maybe comments on the way you dress, for example, or the, how much makeup you wear, that's their insecurities. And they probably just aren't really aware of it. And they're just used to being insecure or have that, like you said, that low self-esteem and it's just coming out and it's not probably intentional. I think most of the time it's not intentional. Well, there's another thing. I actually was not on our list. I actually just thought of it, but people who are on the spectrum, even just a little bit, sometimes lack social sensitivity and they, they can say things rude because they really don't have the sensitivity for the, for other people. Right. Social and, skills. It's a social skill thing with, with some people. They and the, having, yeah. yeah Everyone, just, everybody doesn't have the same IQ. And so self-esteem can be lowered or higher. And just, well, I think that's a good point, especially when it comes to online, you you're in this huge pool of women when you're online. And this was not a thing when, you know, 20 years ago, this wasn't as big of a thing as it is now where we have online chatting and social media and, and people are ruthless online because you can't see them and you don't know them and they can just drop. And them. they know you can't. So they yeah. can be as rude as they and want. You don't know. But, but what made me, what reminded me, what you just said, reminded me of this is that you don't know who that person is behind that computer. You don't know their mental state you don't know their iq you don't know their social skills and they may be somebody that grew up really rough background and i try to remind myself of that constantly when it comes to online uh, insults so we get those yeah off. yeah you kind of have to um the second one is jealousy or rage if you ask me some people are just afraid of competition yeah and i think we touched on that a little bit before that someone could be being sarcastic with you when they make some of these rude comments because they're wanting to get a dig in Mm -hmm. And and sometimes it may be somebody that you have no idea dislikes you and you don't know why. That makes sense. And, and it's probably something that she just is triggered by. And that's another yeah. part of this one with the jealousy or rage is that you're triggered. And I know us being on social media and being online a lot, fascinating women, and we tend to trigger women and not even realize it with some of our topics. So we'll put a, a subject out there, a reel about cleaning, for example, that's a really hot one. And we'll just give examples of how to solve solution, like solve problems in your relationship with cleanliness. And it triggers women and they get offended. <laughs> like they're offended by our videos and we're just trying to help. But women get triggered really, well, everybody gets triggered, I guess, to, to a certain point. But I think women, because like you said, we're so sensitive, will get triggered by certain topics or certain things that they see. And it goes really deep. But I don't think the problem is we don't really realize it. No, and like the, the example you gave of cleanliness uh, triggering people, it can trigger guilt because they don't do it. And so that makes hey. them mad that it's being brought up and they kind of know that they should work harder at it or maybe get a little more organized, but they don't want you and you're pointing it out and it angers them. I mean, we all have triggers, right? We, you and I probably have triggers and we it's about noticing them though. It's about being aware of them and saying, oh, this is an area where I get my blood boils a little bit and I got to mm -hmm. restrain because you don't want to be hurtful. You don't want no. to be a part of the problem. You want to be a part of the solution. At least I hope. <laughs> exactly. And then the third one is just habit. No, I'm, I'm far too outspoken. It's one of my worst faults. Yeah. And you could, you could have also in there um, how you were raised, habit, how you were raised. You develop habits based on what you see your parents do, your culture. It all can kind of go in there. Like, for example, Bob grew up in, in his family. His mother liked and encouraged any and all comments about her food, including this tastes terrible comments. Uh, when we got married, I didn't grow up in that kind of a home. My dad never criticized my mother's cooking. And I thought it was really rude to say this, <laughs> this pork top chop tastes like shoe leather. I mean, that I think that would sound rude to a lot of us, but he, honestly, his mother uh, welcomed those kind of comments. So, oh yeah, it kind of does. And then she'd make him something else. That was partly his habit he brought into marriage, but it was also partly his family culture that was right. not mine. The culture thing is a big, it's very important. So but here's the, here's the thing though. Okay. So you have the culture part, but then you have the man part. And I think what makes this topic extra difficult and sensitive is responding to a woman, because when you're responding to a man, at least for me, anyway, I mm -hmm. feel like I have a little bit more of a comfortable boundary with, with responding to a rude man. I, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I just feel like it's different when you're responding to a rude woman. Why is that? Maybe because you both sense that you're both sensitive and men 
Yeah. More often, more often, not always, more often do it as a matter of uh, being a little clumsy. So right. maybe. we kind of instinctively cut more men a break on that because mm -hmm. they seem kind of clumsy. Right. And seeing a woman as a peer can mm -hmm. be a little more hurtful. And it, you don't, you also don't want to risk, maybe it's somebody that you're friends with. You don't want to risk that friendship. Also, it's, I think a lot of the rude women too, it's not just friends, it's mothers-in-law, it's mothers or family members, aunts, grandmas, it's people in your family and women in your family that you probably don't want to destroy that bond. You really want to make sure that you have that healthy relationship and then they're rude to you and they insult you and you just freeze or you just think, what yeah. do I do? I can't put up with this anymore. Yeah. A lot of us freeze when that happens. And then later we think I should have said this, or I should have said that part of what we're doing here is to give some tips of what you can, how yeah. you can respond. And if you know in advance, I need to have a response because this person always manages to insult me. Right. And so I'm going to pre-plan some responses that don't embarrass me, don't embarrass them and help me diffuse it a little better. I think one last part about the habit is also just the social norm. When yeah. you are used to seeing women be rude. And we see this in our Facebook, our fascinating woman in Facebook group. I see it all the time. Ladies that I talk to constantly, I'm like, oh, these ladies are so great. You know, they're always on here and so supportive and there'll be a thread and people are starting to get aggressive and mean and insulting. And then they'll kind of join in a little bit. I think they'll see that it's getting heated and they'll join in. And I just think that's where I'm thinking, I can't believe that that person is being so rude. They're always so nice. Well, because you might just have this habit of falling into that, like that chameleon kind of yeah. way of thinking where you just kind yeah. of the crowd thing. Yeah. yeah and i think that's another thing that we've got to be aware of is like oh you know i kind of got carried away the other day sorry because i was i kind of got you know tangled into this web of women being kind of mean to each other or i felt defensive of this other woman and so i joined in so i think that can also be a root cause well and along that line and when you're talking about fascinating womanhood sometimes we somebody asks a question or they propose say i need help with and they present their issue and sometimes their issue kind of triggers some other women. They fail to maybe think of this actual person, let's just call her Sue, and what, what is happening to her and not that something like that has happened to you or, or your personal feelings about anyone who does this sort of behavior. Like that's where sometimes we get women saying, just leave him because it's triggered by their own experiences. So right. they, they're not thinking of Sue at that moment. They're thinking, kind of reaction yeah. based on themselves and yeah. how they would feel if someone at least how they imagine it did it to them because online when someone gives us a question or a problem they're only giving us very broad strokes there's a whole story behind all these stories so for us to get triggered by it or make rude comments because we don't know hardly anything mm -hmm. if someone writes two paragraphs that doesn't tell you the story right Okay, so we're going to go into the three tips that we have for you. And these three tips, by the way, are all in Dixie's book, Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless Woman. If you haven't read it, we'll attach the book to this video. Mm -hmm. All three of these tips all have to do with developing your character as a woman. So the first one is, we're calling it, they know not what they do. That is not what I mean, and you know it. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it's a biblical reference. And it means that the people who are doing something rude to you don't really understand how it's hurting you. If you can cut people a little bit of a break of they they're lucky. They have no idea what this is like. They don't know what they're saying because they're putting their own life experience into it instead of thinking of you. Mm -hmm. They just have no idea. And I think part of this tip could also be if it's a, if it's someone that's doing this constantly, or you feel like you're in a social group where you're constantly being offended, this might include you having to distance yourself from this person or these people. Yeah. If you, if you can, if they're not too close a relative, you know, if you can, if you can, you might have to distance yourself, but how to respond to it? How do you respond to that? It, de it depends. There's more than one way you can ignore it. You can just listen to them and not respond, change the subject, just say, well, that's something to think about. It depends on what it is, of course. But there, there are ways you can avoid, deflect, or like you said, if it's someone that is constantly, they have, you feel like they have a grudge against you. They have a prejudice against you. If you can distance yourself from them, that, that can be helpful because sometimes that's all you can do. I think this is just a mindset shift. And this one is more importantly, this one is more helpful for it happening constantly. I think if you're surprised with an insult, this is kind of tough because you're <laughs> yeah. it's just right there in the moment. It's hard to be like, oh, well, they don't know what they're doing because this is just a mindset shift. So for me, this one is more about, oh, okay, I'm getting ready to be around this person. They constantly don't understand or they don't support me in my lifestyle choices or they constantly, you know, make some kind of comment about how I look and just know going into that situation 
they don't mean to do this. And I'm just going to have to prepare myself to just be the best that I can be. Like, for example, with um, appearance, there's somebody that constantly when I'm around them, they make a comment about me being dressed up or wearing makeup or whatever. I know every time I go over there that I'm just going to be like, thank you. And I just, I just know going over there that I have to just be as polite as possible. And I say to myself, they just don't know. They don't, they're not doing on purpose. <laughs> the second one is we're calling it, you catch more bees with honey. You catch more flies with honey. And when I think of this one, what, there's many parts to it, but one of the things I think of is how you can use humor to de deflect and diffuse situations, or you can go, you can go with it. And like they say, are you still breastfeeding? You say, oh, I haven't even got started. <laughs> Yeah you, can, yeah, you can go more in that direction. Yeah, I agree. And I think if you don't have the wit and you don't have the the cute little thing to say, this can be as simple as just smiling in response yeah. or, or a little yeah. a little giggle or something if it's appropriate, but just a smile and to just be like, oh, you know, yeah, I am, you know, I, I think that you can be um, sweet and kind uh, if someone is insulting to you or rude to you and it's better than nothing or it's better than sitting there with deer and headlight kind of face <laughs> you can just be yeah. kind you can also say ouch which is a subtle way of saying that hurt my feelings and they may be surprised like really but you don't want to think about this the last thing you want to do is insult them back i think that's what ends up right. happening a lot of times is that mm -hmm. we insult them back and then we get into these really negative things that we don't want mm -hmm. and it escalates and then then yeah. you really aren't friends yeah and when in the beginning they may not have meant anything by it anyway and even if they did like say they're jealous of you or threatened by you doing that is not going to help at all and you don't want to escalate if you can keep that in mind you do not want to escalate and you don't want your relationship to be worse and, and then the last one is be bold this is for when you are really hurt i could die i could just die this is reserved for those times where someone is pur probably purposely or more intentionally rude to you uh bob has taught me to say are you upset with me mm -hmm. or do you have no idea how much what you just said hurt my feelings that's very upfront it's not hinting it's just very upfront and you're not saying calling them names right you're, you're addressing specifically what they said what they did instead of saying that's rude that's that's calling them out on something. You're owning your own feelings by saying, you have no idea how much that hurt my feelings. When right. You being, being bold isn't about hurting them back. No, it's not getting even. Being it's, bold is more about standing up for yourself at the time and the place that you feel that you need to. Yeah. You can even say, stop hurting my feelings. Or are you mad at me? Why are you mad at me? That's, that's, let's, let, if you're upset with me, let's talk about that instead of giving me hints. You know, I have a friend that years and years ago, said to my other friends when are you going to start a family it's about isn't it about time you guys start a family and she said in response this is an example of being bold not everyone is blessed to have a family when they want to i like that and i thought that was very tasteful a tasteful response and it's also nipping it in the bud meaning i don't want you talking about this to me anymore like i'm, I'm gonna plant the seed now that you need to back off and it was very it wasn't mean it was just it was just a really good direct kind of form of communication of letting the other girl know <laughs> what was going on with them. Some people honestly don't realize that you don't say that it's a boundary jump. And so that response was perfect. And yep. you can, and if you're around a person who does this regular regularly, you can pre think of responses to it. There's that uh, stress response. It's fight, flight, or freeze. Some people just think it's fight or flight, but there's freeze. A lot of us ladies do freeze more than, than the other where we just we just don't say anything and then we're mad afterwards that we didn't do anything but they're we're resentful so if you're the type that freezes and don't know what to do you can pre-think of what you're going to say it's easy and you look real quick doing yeah. it i think a lot of the ladies that comment on lifestyle uh choices like being a stay-at-home mom is a big one that they get they they're offended that working women judge them for staying home or they think that they're lazy we mentioned that earlier well i get asked about this a lot but i'm actually not offended by it because <laughs> i love staying at home and i worked for so many years that i know the difference and so for me i have to have a planned kind of thing because it's it's true when someone asks me about staying at home i always say yes and i love it I don't even give them an opportunity to judge me <laughs> because I just yes, yes, on yes. and I say, yes, and I love it. Sometimes and, I would say, I feel so lucky to get yeah. to at home with the kids. Just remember, you don't have to, you don't have to get even. 
You yeah. can let, let them have it. It's a freebie. Let them have it. Do you know, um, when I was writing the book, when I came to the chapter on character, I, I always think this isn't a fun chapter. It's kind of boring because you talk about character and it's something that um, we have to work on and it's something that everyone needs. But character, honestly, we can we can say from just a grassroots thing, if you don't, if you either don't have a good character, you're not married to someone with good character. And I mean by that, someone who's basically honest, who tries to be good to other people, who tries to support the people they're committed to and it tries to be a good a good person a good citizen and and not causing trouble and uh, uh, repairing things when you messed up repair instead of just letting it go character is so important and all these things that we just talked about um with rudeness could be solved by the person themselves developing a little more character which involves sensitivity to others instead mm -hmm. of just oneself and and i say that even culture even with the culture differences, you can learn to be sensitive to whoever you're talking to. So if, in other words, if you're talking to someone from a culture or a country that you don't know hardly anything about, and you can see that you've offended them, you can never do it again. You can apologize for it. You can learn from it. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to accidentally offend people. But the more you work on yourself, which is something you're free to do all day long, and try to be the best you know how to be, you will grow and you will become more mature, you'll become more sensitive, more caring, then you'll have less incidences like that where you accidentally offend somebody. Yes. Less, not completely gone, but less because you can't know everything always. Yes, the character section of your book is absolutely amazing. And we have actually done, we have a playlist on our YouTube channel that's titled character development. If you want to learn more about that, you can click on the playlist attached to this video and you can watch all the other videos we've done on character development. Because like you said, if we could work on it, Every day, all day, for the rest of our well, life. You know, we have so many questions from ladies, and I get really discouraged when somebody writes in about their husband or boyfriend, and they sound like a criminal. Because if you're married or attached to somebody who's basically kind of a criminal, they're, it's not going to work very well. And so I think if this person does this, this, and this that they describe, that's discouraging because that's if it's a character flaw, like they're basically dishonest. And, and it can't work with us if we think we can fib all the time or expect everyone to do everything our way it it doesn't work long term uh, in a relationship you can't change another but you can sure work on you ideally that's what we're here for in fascinating women we're working on ourselves all the time not beating ourselves up but working on ourselves okay well thank you so much for all of that really wonderful advice i think this is such an important topic and i know it's so hard and ladies out there we're not trying we're not trying to tear each other down but no. this is just a part of this is just a part of life and it's just natural and we would love to hear all the comments that you have out there the comments that you've had the things you're challenged with maybe there's some things we left out that you want to point out we'd love to hear from or you tips or tips you yeah. have or yeah, tips, I'd love some stories of tips work for you yeah mm -hmm. yeah stories of you being having nice little ways of dealing with rude women we'd love to yeah. hear from you um, thank you so much and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm. Attached to this video, you will find our entire book library. You definitely have to check out Dixie's book, Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless Woman. Uh, we also have all of our social media links attached to this video. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all of the places out there that you can find us on and connect with us. Give us a like and a subscribe if you want to know, get notifications when we have more videos coming out. And, and if you have a subject you want us to discuss, drop that down below too. Yes, we would love to hear from you and we will see you next time. Bye. Yeah. Bye.